I like it. I like it. What made you want to be that guy? If anybody doesn't lie to you and tell you the truth, is you try everything. Okay. For sure. I was off beat with the break dance. I, I didn't have like that that thing with break dance. Okay. Like, like, a lot. Because I didn't start as a, I wasn't a good dancer. Okay. Okay. And then I wasn't good at writing lyrics. You know, you go through it. You try right, everything. right, right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then I, graffiti, I was never like a, um, I wanted to be in one of those elements of hip hop DJ, graffiti, break dancer, or uh, rapper. So as it all started to flush out, I was like, this DJ thing is kind of like mechanical. I'm going to be able to do that until I can get my other skills together. That's what's up. So, that was like, you know, I looked up to, I want to be, you know, there's people I heard of and people I saw. Uh, I heard of Van Bada. Okay. I, I heard of Flash. Okay. I seen Breakout. Okay. And I was a very huge fan of the Cold Crush Four. Cool Herc? Um, cool Herc I knew of. Okay. Because of, he had the record store where he worked on right. Boston Road. Right. So I knew of him. But I never seen him in the park in action. So the Cold Crush was the tapes. I used to have the Cold Crush tapes, and because I had a connect, I was. If you had the newest Cold Crush tape, the older kids would gravitate to you. That's what's up. So I had. I would have the most recent, the best I could, Cold Crush Brothers tape. So that gave me in with the guys that were like four or five years older than me. And then, so I looked up at Charlie Chase. Tony Tone because they were really steady. They were funky and they were steady and they had flair and the rappers always talked about them as DJs. So I knew of Jazzy J and I knew of Rappers of Theodore and Blizz Kid. Those were like legends to me that I knew of. Okay. I didn't see them play. So the the next thing I'm gonna um, ask you about, um, mm. or should I say bringing it forward. Now, a lot of people don't know you put out a few mixtapes. Funk Volume mm -hmm. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, if I'm, I'm not mistaken, that. if I'm not mistaken, all of them went gold. Yes, one of them went gold, one went platinum. One went platinum. I think the Eternal of Volume 4 went platinum. But the tapes, I had really. The tapes was kind of an accident. I went to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> I want an accident like that, just to let you know. I went to, I went to Japan, and um, I went to a store, and they were selling the tapes of me on the radio. And I heard the tape, and I remember the tape, and I remember that day, and I was like, I had a cold that day. Okay. And I, I didn't feel I was at my best on the set. So I said, I would. I think I'm a manager at the time. I said, I want a good representation of what I have on the set. Because those early albums was really me licensing records and cutting them up. And then it was a couple of new records mixed in in the beginning. So that was really, and then I think I was on Nervous Records at the time and I had a couple of singles that sold 100,000. And then I remember BMG, BMG, which at the time was RCA. I don't know if they had Wu Tang yet. No, I don't had, think at the time when you came out, I don't they had them just yet. They didn't have, I don't think they had them yet. And I signed, the guy gave me 40 grand, I remember. And uh, he gave me 40 grand to do the deal. And I'm going to keep it a buck. I never told the story. They were, BMG and Loud really gave me 40 grand to play their records. That's what they thought they were doing. So they were like, we're going to sign them to a label deal. And we're going to sign him as an artist right. and cut him his money. And now we can always pick him up on the phone and play the records. <laughs> so when I actually went in the studio, they were asking me, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm, I, I'm naive. I'm thinking you think I'm a good artist. <laughs> so I went and I started to record. And then I remember when I wanted to open the budget, they were like, you, you want to open the budget? I said, yeah, I want to record. I have ideas. I want to make songs. So we made we made it, you know, shout to Steve Riffin, because Steve Riffin was always behind me. But right. I think I did it, I turned it in. But I'm so naive. They're running me around saying, you know, today is your, your album release week. So I didn't know what that meant. I'm running around, I'm doing radio. One week goes by, and then the BMG people came and they brought me food and fruit and cheese. And they said, you know, 
Oh, you, this is great. This is great. This is great. I said, what's great? They said, well, you sold 20,000 records this week. There you go. Wow. So, okay. but, but don't get it twisted. The 20,000 is, is, was not a big release week. They didn't okay. even expect me to move one. But what happened is I kept selling 25,000 and 25,000 and 25,000. It may have got up to 40, and then it went gold. Right. Now, it goes gold, my first album. But because they thought I was going to be a biscuit, they only signed me to two albums. <laughs> so now the second album, no, no, I'm sorry. The first album did go gold. Sorry, sorry. The first album did three, 400,000. The second one now, the okay. second one now, I do 65,000 the first week. Russell Simmons gives me a call, congratulates me. Okay. I didn't understand what all that meant. So the label's taking me out to dinner. And then just being super, super nice, right? right? So I'm thinking, what's happening? At some point, somebody says to me, hey, you know, they only signed you for two albums. Now, most of the time, they signed for five, so I know he was checking for me. Right. They said, they only signed you, they only signed you for two. They want to sign you for three more. They don't know how to tell you they only signed you for two albums. So I said, you know, I'm fine. Put it together. Let's, let's do it. But, um, talk to Steve Griffin. But that was how that, um, that's how that came about. It wasn't it wasn't a plan, it was an accident. I just wanted to shoot a video to get more DJ gigs. Okay. I didn't understand the record selling part until later. Okay. So as the time went on, what's your question, Big Chuck? My question for you is first of all, nice to meet you. Oh, no, 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 no. Are you from the Bronx? No, I'm from Young. I'm from Young. What part? Uh South Southside. Uh, I live uh on uh, Greenwood. All right. Oh, over. I used to live on uh, uh, um, 309 North Broadway. Okay, Broadway that's up the street. And, and on the corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, my question for you is, uh, uh, so me and him, we, we go back and forth between <laughs> the current state of mm -hmm. hip hop. I just wanted to get your uh, two cents about how, how you feel about the current state of the game. Who do you think is going to be, oh, I love it. you know, the, the people or the artists that carry it on? And um, um, you, you know, I can make a perfect example. You know, hip hop. Hip hop, okay, you know, when I was young, you know, way back when, it was, uh... Real rappers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, did I say yes. that loud? Yes. No, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the to your time period is what's real to you. Yeah. So, when Cold Crush Brothers was real to me, Sugar Hill Gang wasn't real to me. Mm. Because it was okay. from Jersey, but, 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 but Cold Crush and, and Grandma and, and uh, um, Fantastic Five, that was real to me. Right. So, and Curtis Blow, and yes. every love on sauce, they really came with that, so in my era, Crash Crew was the cool, they were on mini bikes on the cover, right. that looked like street money, you know, <laughs> like, so that was, that was cool to me. Right. But, you know, the thing that we sometimes lose track of is, what's cool to a kid now, that's his cool. Right. So, at some point I had to abandon that, and then I started to like, Mantronics and Donald D and um, uh, KRS One and MC Shan. That's still a different era. Right? This is and real, then, real hip hop artists. He's calling. And I, I know you don't know who they are. And then I'm at a different there age now. So now, what was there for me at 12? Now maybe I'm 15, 16. Those artists are different. Right. And, it, and it progresses. Rakim, Kane, yes. you know, Chuck Wall Plus. It just, it yes. just progresses. So I do respect the kid who Little Yachty is his hip hop. Right. You know, whatever he's talking about, he's relating. You know, my era, they weren't talking about phone or email or, uh, or Snapchat or FaceTime. Right. But he's talking that talk on that record and he relates to that kid. Right. So we we got to be all right with that. Now, I keep it a buck. I'm a chameleon. Like, I, I don't look at specific artists. I look at it as a DJ coming on the radio in the clubs. What resonates with that kid? So my son likes Humpty Dumpty. I'm gonna play Humpty Dumpty the best. You <laughs> I know. Okay. I think that's how. I think that's how. So I am not a this is Kendrick. Kendrick Cole. Yes. That's the core. Right. You know, they're not the ones selling the most kind of. You know, Drake sells a lot. Um, that like. All of those things are okay. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not it, it makes me feel good. I love the era. I really like, you know, I like A Boogie, I like French Montana, I like Don Q, I like Snoopy Um, You know, I like, uh, 
Young and May. You know, those are like my babies, like the very big things. Yeah, sure. Like that stuff is where that's 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 what's key for me. That's my preference. Okay. Well, the reason why I'm saying that is because, and not to cut you off, but the reason why I'm saying that is because when you have an artist that comes out and says, "I know I'm better than Big," and never, and he said, and I quote, "I never really listened to him." But I know I'm better than who he was. Now, was that Yachty or was that Yachty? Yachty. Yes. And I was like, take your little boat, <laughs> go somewhere because you a little yacht. Trust me, Biggie can feel a big yacht. And I was, I, I was being a dick to him. <laughs> <laughs> when that was going on, absolutely. But um, if I had to describe, because I have talked to Yachty. So okay. But I don't want so. But if I had to describe what I think was going on, um, I think there's a certain amount of rappers who want press. Well, have, have have learned to use social media as right. an extreme marketing tool. Right. I think before it was about letting people know what you have going on. Correct. Now you can make a you can make a person you can make a a personality out of yourself. Right. Oh yes. So I think Yachty. Was Soldier Boy did it? You? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think Yachty was. Um, I love the way he makes his brand happen in social media. Yes. I'm okay. Say that first. Okay. Um. I think rappers like Yachty. Um, they see bars is a scary thing for people. You know what it's like. Mm. It's like DJs. Like I know, in the end of the day, I can cut up, catch the record real fast, and do it like the, the extreme thing as a DJ yes. of where it began. So I can maybe just play a record for an hour and not cut up or show any technique. But I know if somebody tries to show off in front of me, right. I can then and counter. Right. Yes. <laughs> now I think some artists like Yachty, they don't have bars. Correct. So they think they can use social media to downplay bars. Right. So to say Notorious B.I.G. is overrated, okay. it, it is, but, but the real bad part is, it's like if I say Grandma, Grandmaster Flash, I want to use it here, if I say Grandmaster Theodore is overrated, now me as Flex, right. I cannot do everything that Grandmaster, that Grand Wizard Theater does. Yeah. I am not talented enough to wear handcuffs and DJ my on my back. Right. So I'm not going to say that's overrated because I can't do it. Now if you can do it and do it as good as and a little better, then you could say it's overrated. Right. Now I don't think Yari can write like Biggie. No, you but, can't. <laughs> but see, if we remember. During Biggie's time, the only way to express yourself or to be heard or to gain respect was through those speakers. You didn't True. have you didn't have social media True. or a radio interview True. or BET if you went up to see Tigger or you went to MTV to see somebody and Lover and Dre. Right. So this these younger generation, which is great, they have an outlet to set up the bullshit. Yeah. Like, oh, lousy, 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 lousy. This, that, that. Right. So that when the album come, you go, well, and then now, think about it. Before his album came, he was already saying that Biggie's not this, not that. But right. people have those type of opinions. It's just that in social media now it gets hurt. So I do like Yachty. I do like what he stands for. I do like how he handles himself in social media. And I, I like what you know, that part of it I do like. Well, some of the other processes that young people take, you know, for avenues to progress or to show their talents or, you know, there are very few that I know. Um, Kendrick can definitely, if he needs to throw out bars, can. Absolutely. Um, Cole can definitely spit if he needs to spit. Absolutely. But some of these guys that he listens to, okay. like, like Future, yeah. Mumble, Mumble's man. I call him Future Fast. Um, to me, I like the you know, future. Yeah, I don't like the future. I like the past. What category? See, I'm making a joke. Don't mind me. I don't want to. See, I'm gonna give you a perfect example. I'm related to you. Rock him. Yes. Right. 
Now I'm gonna say a name to you. Five. Audio two. Yeah. See? Yeah. So we've always had. <laughs> yes. See, yes. but kids sometimes put Rakim in audio two. If, if you're 35 and you wasn't there, you think audio two and Rakim is the same. <laughs> right, right, right. But it's different. Like, it's a different, it, there's bars, and, 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 and you know, um, Milk D didn't have that. He was a little gimmick, he right. was a little funny. Right. But that, you know, that's what this is now. I'm not saying you're just gimmick. What I'm saying is, Kendrick is what Kendrick is and J. Cole is. And I want to put Drake in that category. Yes. I don't want to, like, leave him out. Sandals are plenty. Sandals are Sand 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 official. <laughs> no, you know what I mean? Uh, and I know he doesn't write every, you know. Yeah, he doesn't but, spit. But, but, but he can't oh, can spit. But I think that, what a you know, Future is, um, okay. I like anything that makes people dance. Right. Yes. yes. But if you tell me what it, con if you ask me what it consists of, I'm always be honest. Yeah. For some reason, Future, I think, has bars. I think he doesn't use them. Oh my goodness. No, no, no. I don't think he uses them. Well, I have not heard anything where he expresses the bars, but there are people who told me that he comes from bars. You're right. right. He goes to the bar and get a cocktail. Yeah. He goes to the bar and get a cocktail. <laughs> this, this is why we go back to the bar. This is why we go back to the bar. I'm just saying. He's not respecting the game. He's not respecting the game. I can't respect the game. You respect him. Uh, you you no. can respect him in the sense that the man is definitely making money in his craft. Where do you put him with Kendrick and Cole? You can't do I, it. I don't see, see me, I put them in different categories. So like Future, the Future, the Young Thugs, all those dudes are Which white. category means? Oh, the one that we can do. If you want to put it that way, if you want to put it that way, the ball.